<laughs> I've got some good news for you tonight. What's that? Your new album has gone double platinum today. Oh, fantastic. It's about time, eh? Yeah, Michael, you're slowing down. Yeah, that's pretty good, though. <laughs> that's great, mate. Really great. Been number one for, what, four weeks? Four weeks. I think we got knocked off on Monday by Farnham, which yeah, is... Yeah, Whispering uh, Jack sort of got to you. That's all right. Uh, screaming Jimmy and Whispering Jack, <laughs> eh? So, uh, no, it's okay. I don't mind as long as it's somebody I, you know... I think he's a great singer and uh, and he's an Aussie. So that's, well, that's the feeling good... now is that in excess may even um, nudge him a bit. So three top groups or three top uh, uh, singers will be uh, getting up there. Well, there's, yeah, there's a hell of a lot of great stuff out there. The, you know, we've um, you know we battled with uh, with my album. You know, we fought off a few attacks from Bon Jovi and whoever. You know, so. Um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be real interesting just to keep an eye on the charts in the next you know month or so. But at least the good thing is for the punters out there, there's a, a great selection of great Australian music coming out, and it probably started off you know a couple of months back with the Oils album, so it's great. Do you try and organise it so you don't clash with each other, um, or do you think well Christmas is coming up, let's get the album out now? I think it's normally it's first in best dressed, but uh, uh, I think uh, I think there might have been a bit of communication between the managers, you know, because obviously you know, uh, especially in a uh, when the countries in the financial state it's in at the moment if we all dropped our albums in the one week the only people that are going to suffer are the uh, the punters they're not going to be able to buy it all so you know we you know we're just a matter of timing you know now on this new album your your wife and children they sing with you on one track yeah they do uh there's a song on there i think it's track eight it's uh, a ballad called when your love is gone and uh we were about to uh we were going to get a choir in and uh my drummer tony brock suggested we um we actually get a, a kids' choir. I said, what do you want to hire a kids' choir for? We've got one, you know. Uh, I've got four children, he's got two, and the engineer who did the album had a couple of kids, so um, we got them all in. And it was uh, hilarious, actually. You know, my wife got in, the nanny, the, my baby was in there. She was blowing raspberries, you know. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was really great. And yeah. You're not telling me that the, the wild man of Australian rocks become the Australian partridge family, are you? It's just it's getting like that, isn't it? I'll tell you what, now, the problem is now, my daughter, who's eight years old, uh, not only does she want to get on stage and sing the song she done on the album, but now she's hassling me to do the rest of the same uh, set as well, you know. <laughs> I, I, I know these songs, Dad, you know. Now, your new single, which we, we previewed last night, uh, Make It Last All Night, yeah. you have big hopes for that. I imagine. Well, it's a, it's a great song. It's a, it's a real, um, you know, it's a great combination of R&B and rock. You know, it was written by myself and two of, two of the probably the most successful songwriters in the world at the moment, Desmond Child and Diane Warren. Uh, and just we'll wait and see how it goes. You can never tell these days. And soon, of course, you're off to the United States to try to uh, make it big over there. Well, we're going to go over and flog it and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> how important is that, Jimmy? Uh, well, it's important. It's a big market. Uh, I think as a performer and as a, as a songwriter and as a singer, it's important for me to be able to go and work new places. And uh, uh, if I can re release records and have some sort of success there, it means it opens up doors for me to go in and, uh, and actually work there, which uh, just, you know, it's inspiring and, it, you know, generally makes you... Uh, I think it's going to make me a better singer. The more, I, the more I travel and the more experience I get, the, you know, I think I'm getting better as a singer and as a songwriter, so... Now, Skyhawks are getting back together. Yeah. Seven years since you left Cold Chisel. Any chance of, of that group uh, reuniting? When are you going to shave your beard off? <laughs> <laughs> it's about the same chance. No, um, I, I actually spoke to the guys, um, you know, not so long back. We were actually thinking about, you know, trying to maybe get it together for the, the Newcastle earthquake relief. But it never, never happened, you know. And uh, I think the problem is that uh, Cold Chisel had such a loyal bunch of fans and everybody was so into the band. Uh, and you've got to remember that one of the reasons, the main reason we broke up was, you know, the fact that we didn't think the band was as good as it had been and we owed it to the fans not to flog it to death, you know, we, we owed it to the fans to quit while we're on top and I think that's the, uh, there's the key you know, the, to the answer there. I don't think it's fair to come back unless we could do it better, which I doubt, you know. Yeah. Well, enjoy uh, the United States, the promotional tour and yeah, we'll uh, enjoy right. your concert tour and you get back starting in Perth. See you soon, mate. Thanks, mate. All Bye -bye. the best. Jimmy Barnes.